السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد ورب شرح لي صدري وحسن لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرينا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرينا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتماعا آمين يا رب العالمين So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam I am assuming that you can hear me inshallah if you can hear me uh, just raise your hand inshallah just so, so we know that you can hear me okay I can see some people raising hands okay so I, I need somebody okay so you can hear me uh, we're gonna get started inshallah just a little bit about uh, dr. Uh, Dawood Nasimi uh, his presentation today will be why people deny God and why people believe in God also known as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are very happy to have uh, Dr. Nasimi with us. He's very unique uh, in his uh, education, especially with his uh, secular background, which is an electrical engineer. He also studied, uh, he has a, a bachelor's degree and inshallah, maybe he can talk a little bit more about it. He's um, studied electrical engineering and he also has a PhD in Islamic studies. Uh, Dr. Nasimi is a professor at the university, local universities here in the uh, district, uh, DC, Maryland and Virginia area. So we're happy to have him inshallah before um, you have any questions or anything else. Uh, we, Doctor will present for about 30 minutes and then we're gonna leave about 25 minutes for a question and answer inshallah. So with that, uh, without further ado, inshallah, I hand you over to the doctor. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to say and hear things that will be pleasing to him and may Allah reward the organizers and everyone uh, for coming up with this great uh, beneficial program, inshallah. The topic is the existence of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the claims for denying and the reasons for confirming. Why people deny God and why people believe in God. So in this presentation, uh, we're gonna go through, uh, if you can see my PowerPoint, first of all, who is God? A lot of people, you know, they may not agree on the concept or, or on, the, uh, on the description for God. Uh, and then uh, some basic questions about God, especially about the existence of God, and then uh, claims for denying and reasons for existence. And is it possible to rationally address the quest for God, for Allah, and how can one do that to explore and confirm the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And um, how does Islam explain the belief in the existence of Allah? Uh, after, so first we will go through some uh, logical common sense approach and then we'll talk uh, from Islamic point of view. We'll see how Islam uses a very logical approach for people to believe in God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, before, uh, so learning about Islamic position, we will use this common sense logical approach. Uh, and the first question that comes up is, who is God? You know, there could be many descriptions, but uh, when we talk to others or explain to them, say, okay, let's take a dictionary kind of di uh, description. The dictionary.com describes God as the one supreme being, the creator and ruler of the entire universe, the ruler of the universe. So if we just take this as a description of God, you know, for many people, the very first question that sometimes may uh, arise that uh, does such an entity exist with this kind of description? Uh, and if yes, then why I cannot see him? And if I cannot see him, then how else I can explore him and confirm him? Uh, about the existence of God throughout the history, there have been some people who have denied the existence, but there have been always a lot of people who have believed in God. And even those people who believe in God, they may have had different concepts of God. Some people believing in one God, monotheism, or some in multiple gods, polytheism. And some in, uh, believe in no God, zero uh, atheism, and some uh, may say I'm not sure or I don't care, and that could be called agnosticism, etc. So uh, people have different uh, beliefs, even if they believe in the existence of God, uh, unfortunately. 
But why people believe in the existence of God? A lot of times, those people who believe in the existence of God, they get offended when you ask them, why do you believe in, in God? Because they are so confident at, about the existence of God that they look at this question as a kind of offensive question that why would you ask me? Uh, I, I never feel a need to prove God to you. I never uh, see this question appropriate uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that I should uh, explain to you why I believe in God. It's like why I believe in myself, why I exist, you know, it's something like that for believers. Most of the believers around the world feel that way. However, these days there are people who are questioning the existence of God and there are people who disbelieve in God. So because of them now, believers have to know how to explain uh, their belief in God. So they have to learn and think about it. They, I mean, the belief is already there, but how to describe it to others, it's important. And uh, so uh, now going back to people, why they uh, deny God? What is What are their explanations when they say, I don't believe in God? Usually, uh, the typical claims that uh, people give for this belief in God, the uh, one of the very common ones is that, oh, I cannot see God, I cannot hear God. So if I cannot hear God and see God directly, then how can I believe in him? Uh, another uh, claim is that uh, I, there is no scientific proof for the existence of God. There is no uh, uh, evidence from scientific point of view, so I cannot believe. We will address these points later, but right now just we will go through the list of the claims. Another common claim is that, uh, you know, uh, why all of so much sufferings and so much injustices in the world and all these natural disasters? If there is a God, then why it, he doesn't stop it and why it's happening all the time everywhere? Uh, people are suffering all the time. Um, another uh, claim that they have is that, uh, you know, the religions that they are familiar with, they have studied the religion and then they have concluded that, wait, the belief system of this religion or what they want us to believe doesn't make sense. Uh, or it goes against the scientific uh, discoveries. So since uh, it goes against scientific discoveries, I cannot accept it. And some other people say, because my prayers have not been answered, uh, so I cannot accept because if there was a God, why he didn't answer my prayers? Uh, another uh, claim would be uh, just because uh, a lot of times the parents for, uh, disbelieve, so the kids also will grow disbelieving and the parents keep saying to the children all the time, there is no God, there is no God. So some children could grow up because of that. And a lot of other times people just, uh, you know, are believers and they believe, but at some point they read some books or they will listen to some lectures or they read. Uh, watch some videos and uh, they get into, they buy into certain ideologies and then they adopt those ideologies and stop believing in God. Uh, other uh, reasons for people disbelieving in God is that uh, they cannot trust religions because of their experience in the religions that they are familiar with. They have tried to understand that and uh, didn't make sense for them, either in terms of doctrines, the religion did not make sense, or in terms of people that they experienced with, they said, out oh, the heck with religious people and religion, because uh, these people that I know, these are this kind of people and that kind of people, or sometimes because they say, look, you know, religion has caused so much religious conflicts uh, in the world, so I want to avoid believing in God. And some other people say that uh, I don't feel the need for uh, to believe in a God why? Because uh, I can do anything that I want to do, or I, I can depend on myself, or I can depend on the resources and tools or other people that I have around me, so I don't have to believe in God. And some other people, they say that, you know, uh, they, they, they believe or they feel that uh, if I start believing in God, then I may lose some of my liberties, some of my freedoms, some, some of my autonomy, and I don't want to believe in something that then I have to do certain things or I have to have a certain lifestyle, or, uh, you know, so these are usually, these are uh, mostly the typical claims of people who do not believe uh, in God. So uh, before we address these points, uh, you know, let us now look at the other side of the coin that uh, people who believe in God, why they believe, what are the, their reasonings and explanations. Uh, people who believe in God, they say that, look, you know, just use your brain, use your intellect and mind to reflect on some of the uh, questions, such as, how does this world came? How does the universe came? How this universe was created? How human beings with such a 
sophisticated uh, life and body and organs that we have uh, came about without a creator. And this world in its vastness and all the complications that we have, how could this universe be created without a creator? And how could uh, other beings, all those uh, animals, plants and everything else come into being uh, without a cause behind them? And what about the, the processes of birth and deaths? You know, it's so uh, uh, automated, you may call it, or it's so uh, uh, meticulous the way it is happening that kids come to this world and the way people keep dying. The same way thinking about uh, having uh, two sexes for all creatures, for human beings, for animals, for plants, having a male and female, how it's designed that everything should have a, a pair. Um, and uh, pair not only among living creatures, but even in uh, non-living creatures and animate or inanimate objects, even in matter, you have positive and negative charges, proton and electron. And uh, if you also look at the day and night as a pair, if you look at the, uh, you know, uh, sun and moon as the pair and, uh, uh, you know, uh, everything else, black and white, uh, it all has, comes in pairs. Also, if you reflect on the sustenance, uh, the, the way our food is prepared, how the earth has become fertile to produce for us food and how uh, our food comes from the uh, earth, uh, plants and animals, and how the rain comes down and produces all of this and all of the provisionings that we receive, you know, could it, be, uh, could it all come by itself automatically or randomly uh, or with no plan and no cause behind it? Etc. So these are some of the minimum questions that we can ask, and, and uh, these people that look, you know, uh, uh, what's your answer? Now you may hear that say, well, there's a s explanation, as there's a scientific explanation for each of these questions and more. Uh, true, there is a scientific explanations, but if you really reflect and open your mind, the scientific explanations are focusing mainly on how things happened and how things are happening. Right, so scientific explanations are focusing on the processes, basically, uh, not on the causes, not on the real cause. The causes, as long as it is tangible and apparent, uh, science talks about it, but if it's not apparent and tangible, science does not talk about it. So basically, science does not ha talk about who made this happen, who created the world, who created human beings, who is the uh, uh, cause behind uh, the births and deaths, who is the cause behind all these uh, pairs, who is the cause behind the day and the night. So science does not talk about it. Why science doesn't talk about it? Because it is not the topic of science. Science doesn't care about who made what. The, the who is not a question of science. You know, if, if science talks about a car, science talks about how the engine works, how everything in the car works, and uh, how the radio works, how the uh, phone works. It doesn't talk about who made it, and that's not a scientific topic. Who is not a topic of science to care about who made it? And uh, if you talk about the software, it just talks about how the software works, how this app in the phone works. You know, that's uh, the focus of science. So now, just because science does not talk about the who, then why we are excluding the who? Based on what? Science can never prove that there is no who behind anything. Science can only talk about what is happening, how this happened, you know, what are the apparent causes, what are the apparent processes that uh, we can find out, and we can even meticulate that and, and we can, uh, you know, uh, repeat that and uh, sometimes and do it ourselves through scientific processes. So uh, science does not talk about the who, but common sense says that there is a who. Like if you see a piece of art, common sense says that there's an artist behind it. And uh, so science only talks about the art, how it is made, similarly about everything else. And even if we use scientific basis as the basis of belief, uh, you know, all scientists all over the history and all over the world uh, and people of knowledge in general, philosophers, everybody, they have agreed throughout the history uh, about a principle. That principle is principle of cause and effect. That principle basically says that nothing can exist, nothing can start, nothing can stop without a cause behind it. So uh, if there's a table in front of me, it means that somebody made this table and somebody 
brought this table and put it in front of me, otherwise the table would not exist here. So that's the principle. Based on that principle that everybody agrees, including all the scientists, then uh, that principle tells us that this life should have a cause. This world should have a cause. Now, what is, uh, who is that cause? Uh, so even science will lead us to believe in a cause behind the world, behind this life. Now, if, you, if we just study the life, even if we study the universe, we would see all kinds of, uh, you know, patterns in the universe. We would see all kinds of perfections. We would see all kinds of organization in every creature in the, in the world uh, and, and in human beings. We can see all kinds of timing uh, that's there, distances, measured distances. We can see all kinds of cooperation and coordination among different entities within our body and all around. We can see all kinds of procedures for living creatures and non-living creatures in every aspect of this world and universe. And uh, we can find out all kinds of processes that exist for uh, such as human cellular respiration, plant uh, uh, photosynthesis, water cycle. You know, there's all kinds of processes, established processes everywhere. And also we realize that everything has a purpose. Every process has a purpose. Every part of our body, every organ has a purpose. And every creature has a purpose on the earth and in the world. And everything has a duty to perform and the, the duties are performed uh, perfectly. And everyone's needs, needs of animals, birds, plants, uh, needs of the uh, uh, environment, needs of people are continuously fulfilled. Now, when you just reflect on such a uh, few points, then you ask the question, can all of this happen through the blind forces of nature? Uh, by chance or by accident or by coincidence or randomly or by itself? Any of these, you know, reflect on any of these points that is it possible? And can this world uh, uh, come through the blind forces of nature or through any kind of conjectures, any kind of gases? Can all of this organization exist without an organizer? Can all of this regulation exist without a regulator? Can all of this design exist without a designer? Common sense will say that, you know, behind every each one of them should be a cause and a designer and a planner. Further, uh, you know, DNA, which is one of the big discoveries of recent times, and it's going to change a lot of things in the world in terms of science. You know, if we just go to the uh, DNA experts, uh, such as Francis Craig and James Watson, two American uh, scientists who determined the structure of the human DNA, what do they say? They say you would be more likely to assemble a fully functioning and flying jumbo jet by passing a hurricane through a junkyard then you would be to assemble the DNA molecule by chance. <laughs> Basically, these two uh, folks, they are saying that, that uh, you know, if you tell me that there is a, a hurricane uh, a, a storm that came uh, and went through a junkyard, and as a result of that, a jumbo jet, a fully flying, a fully functioning flying jumbo jet was made, I can believe that. But I cannot believe that a DNA of human being was made, uh, you know, by itself, uh, without any plan, without any design behind it. So even, you know, some scientists uh, who open their minds and who've, who have opened their minds, they reach this, these kind of conclusions. Further, what is the innate nature of human beings uh, think and feel? You know, every human being and their innate nature and their original nature, they believe in God. If you see that uh, most of the people around the world, uh, more than 90% of people, they say that I, I feel God's existence in my heart, uh, and especially children and young people who have not been influenced by other ideologies uh, yet, you know, uh, and even if people grow up in a jungle or in an island and nobody tells them anything about religion, they say that I, I believe in a higher power, they feel a higher power above them. Where is this feeling coming from in everybody who believes in God? And uh, anyone else who has not been influenced by atheist ideologies, you know, they, they believe in the existence of God. Is that uh, by accident that everybody believes in God, even if their parents have not told them? Or is it a natural part of every human being to believe in God? Is belief, isn't belief in God uh, built in inside every human being as a child when they come to this world? Another point to uh, pay attention, uh, all these religions in general, all divine religions, they all believe in God, and God is the central focus of every religion. 
is it possible that all of these religions made up the idea of God and they said, let us fool people and they came up with this idea or there is something behind it that they all talk about God and they all bring teachings of God. Uh, and what does the history tell us? Uh, we should also look at the history. You know, all those people who thought uh, they are running the universe and they are ruling the world and they, are, uh, uh, they express so much power and so much just what happened to them? Where are they? And what are they doing right now? Uh, you know, uh, uh, further, uh, uh, you know, usually people who don't believe in God, uh, they uh, think and they claim that uh, people who believe in God, they have no evidence and no proof, uh, no proof for existence of God. That's what they claim. But if you ask them that, you know, what is your claim? What is your uh, basis? What is your proof? Uh, uh, believers can say that they have all kinds of proofs as we just went through so many. Uh, but uh, if you ask them, what is your proof? They have no proof whatsoever. And every proof that they bring is based on assumptions, based on speculations, based on conjecture, based on hypothesis. Now let's look at some of those in the first slide that why they don't believe. For example, they say, you know, uh, why there are so much sufferings, why there are so much injustices. So just because they don't know the wisdom of the sufferings, just because they don't know the reason behind all these sufferings and injustices, so they make a conclusion based on this assumption, based on this lack of knowledge, they make a conclusion that God doesn't exist. But that's not scientifically you know, acceptable to, based on an assumption, you make a conclusion and, and based, of, based on lack of knowledge. There are very valid and very well uh, 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 reasoned explanations that uh, uh, religions like Islam offers for uh, human sufferings, for injustices. And if you understand that, then you will have a second thought about it. Uh, just because your religion or the, another religion that you studied did not explain it properly. So why do you make such a conclusion? Or just because you don't see God, why? how can you make a conclusion that God doesn't exist just because you cannot see? There are a lot of things that we cannot see or we cannot hear directly. Uh, are we able uh, technically and scientifically and logically to reject the existence of it? And basically, is it reasonable to deny the existence of God simply because uh, we cannot see or simply because we cannot uh, uh, perceive it by our sense, uh, senses, five senses? Uh, but uh, yes, we cannot see God. And uh, of course, Islam has its own explanations that we will come to. Uh, that uh, God uh, made himself invisible. One of the reasons that God wanted to test human beings who believes in God based on rational and logical evidences and who believes in God, uh, who is waiting to see God physically and they, they are only depending on their eyes and their ears and they want to believe on that. If you cannot see God yourself, aren't there all kinds of signs of God available around you and inside you? Signs of God is enough to believe in God because, you know, uh, we believe uh, based on signs, everything else. Let us just think of the example of the building right now that we are in, each one of us. You know, uh, this building, say we did not see the builder that uh, the builder made this building and say, uh, imagine that the builder is hiding himself somewhere. And if you uh, look at this building, you know, and someone says that, oh, this building was built by itself. You know, when you look at the uh, structure of the building, when you look at the division of the rooms, when you look at the stairs, when you look at the uh, windows and the screens and the wall and the ceiling and all the different uh, parts of the construction of the building, uh, you know, you can see tens and hundreds and thousands of reasons uh, and you can see tens and thousands of signs of a builder. Even if we do not see the builder, it is convincing logically that this building was made by a builder because every aspect of this building tells me that there's a builder behind it. There's a construction company behind this building and the windows, the doors, the ceiling, the uh, flooring, the, uh, everything tells me that there is a builder behind it. And I don't have to see the builder to believe that this building has a builder. You know, uh, uh, so someone may say, well, we have seen other builders building the building. That's why we can accept. But imagine that builders, you know, build a building for you, say somewhere in a desert, and there is a, some you, you can. There is no way that you can find out about those builders. No matter how much uh, resources you are using to find the builder, you can. You go in a desert, you go in a place, and you see a building with all kinds of structures. 
can you conclude that this building was built by itself? That's exactly what people conclude when they uh, say that this universe, this world was created by itself just because we cannot see the builder. Or in their abandoning reasons and abandon science to rationally believe in the existence of an ultimate cause, which is God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some people may say, well, well, you believe in something that you cannot see and uh, they call it a blind faith. It's not blind faith. Blind faith uh, is not faith in unseen. Blind faith is the faith in something that doesn't make sense. Blind faith is uh, faith in something, belief in something that that can be disproved, that can be uh, proved wrong. Uh, if you still believe in it, that's blind faith. For example, someone believes in a statue that this statue can uh, do wonders for me. This statue can save my life. But in front of him, you can you know, slap the statue and the statue will fall down and break down and into pieces. Say, wait a minute, this, this statue could not even save itself. How could this statue uh, save you? You know, but the person says, no, I still believe in the statue that the statue can save me. This is blind faith, something that can be disproved, something that doesn't make sense and still people believe in it. But believe, but uh, believe in unseen is believing based on rational evidences, based on intellectual evidences that your intellect can accept, your rationality can accept, even though you cannot see it uh, as long as it makes sense, then that's not a blind faith, that's a rational evidence actually, and a rational faith, a rational a logical faith. So uh, there's a big difference between blind faith and a rational faith. Uh, now, the faith is something that must make sense because uh, how could you believe in something that doesn't make sense? It better make sense and the heart and the mind should buy into uh, faith. Otherwise, how could you give all of your life to the faith without uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, conv being convinced that this is, makes sense? So now using a rational approach, uh, let us see if we can prove the existence of God. And I'll again, I have very little time. I, have, I could take, a, uh, inshallah, I have just five minutes to briefly discuss about this. We need much more time. Uh, if someone tells you that, can we use, can we uh, can explore and confirm uh, existence of God using a rational method? Uh, the answer is that, well, let us see how do we discover other realities in this world uh, on a daily basis. If we really think about it, humanity until today, they have used three methods to discover any reality. Uh, and, and all realities have been discovered and confirmed and verified by three methods. The first method is through sensory perception. You know, our five senses, whatever, something that we can see and we can hear, we can say that I believe in it. I can swear that this exists because I saw it with my own eyes. I, I, hear, I heard it with my own ears. That's one way. But that's not the only way that we can uh, discover realities. The second way is, through logical inference. You know, a lot of times we cannot see things, but uh, we can, uh, uh, can accept that this exists based on logic, based on reasoning. For example, if say A equals B, B equals C, we can say A, A is equal C. Why? I don't have to see the equality of A and C, but if A is equal B and B is equal C, then I can say that A is equal C. Logically, uh, that makes sense and I will accept it. I don't have to see it. Uh, uh, so the, a lot of things uh, we uh, con conclude that it exists because based on logical, uh, based on reasoning. Uh, and the third method is uh, reliance on expert testimony of credible witnesses. You know, when, when something uh, uh, that we cannot see and also we cannot logically conclude whether it exists or not, if a person who is really expert in the field and is trustworthy or she is trustworthy and they come to us and they say that, hey, wait a minute, you know, uh, I just saw this and it, it, it happened there. We usually believe them, you know, a simple example, we all go to medical doctors and you, we explain our symptoms and the doctor concludes that you have this kind of disease or that kind of disease or this kind of uh, virus, you know, we have no way to see it by our senses and logically also we cannot conclude because we don't have that knowledge. Only the doctor who has the knowledge, he can conclude uh, logically. So we depend on them and we accept them most of the time. In any other field, we go to experts and we accept their opinions based on their expertise as long as they are credible, as long as they are trustworthy. So now the question is it, that these three methods that we are using for proving other realities in daily life, can we use any of them or all of them to prove the existence of God? 
uh, since we have very little time, so I'll be very brief. The first method, the first method through sensory perceptions. Can we use sensory perceptions to prove God? Sensory perceptions, as we know, is uh, our five senses. And can we see God? Can we hear God? No. And uh, But can we conclude that God doesn't exist just because we cannot see? No, because our senses have limitations. We can only see so much. We can only hear so much. And uh, uh, we know logically and scientifically that we cannot uh, uh, reject something just because we cannot see or hear. So the first method is the only method that basically has limitations. And because of that limitations, it is not very useful to confirm the existence of God. But can the second and third method be used? Of course, absolutely. The second method, logical inference, how can we use that? Just uh, go back to the principle of cause and effect. Everything should have a cause. So this life should have a cause. This world should have a cause. And every uh, thing that you go through the uh, causes, then you, if you go through the sequence of causes, okay, what caused this? What caused this? What caused this? Okay, this was the cause of this. This was the cause of this. You go to a kind of infinite number of possibilities uh, or and you reach an unknown point logically. And you reach a point that basically you say, this must be the cause of all causes. And uh, in, in geom geometry sequences, if I say 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, what is the end? It's infinity. So uh, we all, as people of knowledge and science, we have agreed on, on the concept of infinity. And when you reach that point of infinity, that is actually God. According to all religions, divine religions, when they explain God, God is infinity. God is infinite in terms of his knowledge, in terms of his power, in terms of all of his attributes. So and infinity must be one. It cannot be two or three. Infinity also should be eternal and should not have a beginning or ending. So all the descriptions of infinity actually come to the description of God. Nothing can be reduced from infinity, nothing can be added to infinity, all of that. Uh, so logically, we can conclude easily that there is a cause of all causes or sabab al-asbab, which is uh, the, uh, uh, that's the cause of the whole universe. And the third method that, uh, uh, you know, just like we depend on certain scientists who have seen the virus and bacteria under microscope, or we depend on uh, engineers who have made certain things or depend on car mechanics who make certain things. You know, we have experts about God also. Who are the experts? Throughout the history, there have been some individuals who have had first-hand knowledge from God, who have uh, been exposed to unseen realities. They have seen the angels and uh, they have got knowledge from God directly through angels. They are the expert witnesses that uh, they have brought to us and they have left behind them legacies and evidences, books, such as Quran. So uh, they also told us that, yes, not only God exists, but this is this is what God wants. And this is, these are all the instructions of God for life and for people. So uh, the third method is also very uh, reliable and useful that all these prophets of God uh, are the experts uh, that they have received guidance from God directly and they have brought the guidance and the guidance is still around us. And we can uh, once we can verify that this guidance has not changed, then uh, it doesn't matter how how long was it, because people may say, well, this was a long time ago, but even if 3,000 years ago something happened, as long as we can verify that, yes, this happened, as long as we don't have question about authenticity of it, then it is valid, scientifically, knowledge-wise, it is uh, valid that we can depend on those expert with, uh, testimonies, especially if the evidence is there. So books of those prophets are still there around us and the Quran, the final book is around. So that's the best uh, testimony of existence of God and all, uh, all the other uh, guidance of God. So we can see that we can easily use that the method, the second method and the third method to explore God, to confirm the existence of God. But only with the first method, we have limitations and a lot of people, they conclude that God doesn't exist just because the first method doesn't work for them. And let me give a simple example to understand these three methods. You know, for example, uh, all of us right now, if, they, if it's nighttime, you know, there's a light on, or if it's daytime, the sun is on, right? So the, what are the three methods that we can confirm the reality of the sun or the reality of the light inside the room? You know, the first method is through sensory perception. So we can see the lamp and we can confirm that, yes, light is on because I can see the lamp. The second method, logical inference. Say you are now seeing the light <coughs> in the hall or in the other room through a window. 
You know, just that you see the brightness of the other room, you can say that the light is on. You don't have to see the lamp uh, that you can say that, uh, you can conclude that, oh, uh, since I can uh, I cannot see the lamp, I, I can say that light is uh, not there. No, uh, as long as you see the brightness of the other room, you can say that the light is on, or as long as you see brightness outside, you can say the sun is shining, you know. This is the second method, so I don't need to see the lamp. The third method, if someone trustworthy comes from the hall or from another room and tell us that the light is on in that room, so we all accept it as long as we don't have doubt about the sanity of this person or intelligence of this person or uh, uh, honesty of this person, we all accept that the light in the other room is on. So you see that this example of light in, in, in the room or in the hallway or in the other room, uh, the, the three methods, how we can use it to confirm with, uh, so that's what these methods are all about. And every piece of knowledge that we have today are uh, accumulated or developed based on one of these methods or a combination of these three methods so far. Uh, I uh, have mo much more to cover, but because of time, I'm stopping here. So we have a little time for uh, some time for questions and answers. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, so inshallah, uh, uh, can you take me up the speaker on the phone? Uh, yes. So, if you have any questions, inshallah, on your dialogue box, on the webinar uh, pop-up uh, chat, there is a question and answer. Uh, you can uh, open up the question and ask any question pertaining to the presentation, inshallah. Uh, we will answer those first and then uh, we will go on. So in the meantime, inshallah, while the people are uh, typing out their question, I wanted to ask you a question about this. And um, Doc, thank you very much. You spoke uh, like a professor with uh, abundant of uh, information, uh, very beneficial information. And we, we uh, will provide the recording for this class, inshallah, and for previous classes as well. Uh, I'm gonna uh, give all the students uh, or their listeners uh, the link, the link for this. Everything is recorded, so they will see your presentation as well, your PowerPoint uh, slide. They will see that as well. Um, so my first question is: uh, When we live our everyday life, do we actually um, use signs for everything that we do? Like, for example, I go to the grocery store, and uh, the people are saying uh, the banana is forty-nine cents a pound. Uh, and I go to the state, how do I prove, I mean, like what is the scientific method that is being used there to buy, just purchase banana at the store? Because apparently um, with the people that are denying God, they're saying you have to use science for everything. Uh, or, or if I wanted to ask someone uh, which season they prefer, personally, do they prefer the winter or the summer? And they're giving me the, their, um, their opinion. Is that scientific? Um, can, yeah, can we measure that scientifically? Uh, somehow, uh, I missed some of the words. Can you repeat the question, please? Briefly. Oh, oh okay. So, so the question is, do we use science for everything that we do in our lives? No, we can't. Uh, science cannot be used for many things. You know, moral aspects of life cannot be explained, and uh, 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 you know, by science, um, many things: our likes, our dislikes, our preferences, our personal uh, love, and many other things. Uh, they cannot be understood and measured by science, and they cannot be explained by science. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. So, we have another question here. Is uh, how do we talk to people about God when they, like agnostics, if they don't really care about God? How do we start? And they wanted to know, how do you start a conversation? Basically, you know, you're trying to, to bring to their attention the importance of the topic. That look, you know, uh, look at your own life, look at around you, look at inside you. Don't you think that someone is behind all of this? And don't you think that if someone who has given you all these capabilities, someone who has given you all these resources, don't you feel any responsibility towards that? Don't you want to know a little bit about your creator? 
uh, don't you want to know that something about the creator of this universe uh, you know so you try to bring to their attention the significance of the question and the significance of uh, their uh, you know exploration that they must explore they must hear they must pay attention you know uh, because this is too costly for them not to uh, think about it and to, uh, it's it's hard to ignore uh, for example say you know uh, uh, something is happening in the street that we live uh, you know and there is some kind of big big uh, dangerous things happening in our street or in our neighborhood you know someone cannot be indifferent about it and someone cannot say that oh i don't care i, don't, I know you, you they would care and they must care because it will affect them so you know the, the existence of god and the role of God in people's life is very, very extremely important for everybody if they think about it. And they should, uh, they, they better, uh, you know, pay attention to this topic and they better try to find out who is my God, what are the attributes of my God, what are the qualities of my God, and what is the purpose of life, why uh, he created me, uh, and uh, based on what I can succeed in this life, based on what... Uh, how can I uh, do uh, things to please God, to worship God? You know, all of these questions should be naturally coming in people's mind and, and they should uh, pose these questions to themselves or to uh, others. And, and uh, it is something that we cannot afford to be indifferent about. Okay. Uh, thank you. Someone else asked, uh, they said, Assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah khair for this uh, opportunity. This uh, information is very beneficial. And they wanted to ask, how can they uh, use this information to talk to Muslims who might have sort of uh, come to the West or grew up in the West and they've left their religion uh, to bring them back? How can you use this? Um, alhamdulillah, it's Allah's blessings for all of us that he has enabled us and give us this opportunity. Um, definitely, um, it's important for everyone, including our uh, Muslim brothers, sisters, that when they uh, are uh, careless about their religion or careless about their lives, basically, you know, it's important uh, to bring uh, to their attention uh, that, look, uh, you know, do you really believe in God or not? And if you don't believe uh, you want to find out why uh, there is a God or how there is a God, you know, because a lot of times those people who have left the religion, maybe they have lost their faith. Uh, and so we have to find out if they, if they really have lost the faith or the faith has just become weak. And uh, uh, as a result of weakness of the faith, now they are not interested. So uh, we have to you know, ask the kind of questions in a beautiful and nice and wise way to find out uh, if they still have faith, if they still have belief in God, if they still have belief in next life. A lot of people believe in God, but they don't believe in next life, or they stop believing in next life, and that's what makes them, you know, uh, leave the religion or not to do anything about religion because of lack of feeling responsibility or lack of feeling consequences for their actions. So it is important to uh, bring to their attention and I first find out that do you believe in this and uh, if, if they believe then you help them understand that belief better but if they say no I don't I no longer believe then you help them to develop that belief um, and to help develop that belief you start with belief in uh, God first if they believe or not and even if they say I believe it is good to uh, probe them with some questions and make sure that they really believe and if uh, if they don't believe in next life then you talk about the importance of next life and you talk about the purpose of life and you talk about uh, all the questions that should come up in our minds uh, from, uh, because a lot of people when they say that I believe in God but I don't care about uh, other aspects of religion then you say wait a minute you know don't you want to know this about this don't you want to know this about don't you want to know why God created us why why God uh, you know did this or that for us and uh, asking them these kind of questions help them to reflect on the need for religion, need for guidance. Uh, and then once they understand the guidance, then uh, helping them to follow the guidance. Uh, so basically, uh, if I repeated that, first we want to assess if they have belief or not. And if they have belief, then we help them to take that belief into actions. And if they are, uh, their belief have become weakened, we try to help them to strengthen their belief. 
and we try to help them in uh, developing uh, their relationship with their creators and as a result of that with people with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. Thank you. And someone had a, a very good question. They said, um, by the way, all the questions are, are, are very good. Someone says, if um, if a person wants to stick only with rational, um, sorry, this, oh yeah, if we try to use the Quran to prove the existence of God, it becomes a, a circular reasoning because uh, non-Muslims doesn't believe in the Quran and they don't accept it as a divine book. So how do you um, how do you prove the existence of God through the Quran? Uh, so first of all, as I started, I use the common sense and logical approach. So with those people who do not believe in Islam, uh, you start with common sense approach and logical approach to help them understand. And uh, when you get them into logical uh, inference concept and uh, logical reasoning and conclusion uh, to accept that there is a God. Uh, and then uh, also Quran uh, helps them in terms of the scientific knowledge in the Quran and in terms of certain things, you know, so uh, even if someone says that I don't believe that this is the book of God, then ask them how could this kind of knowledge be in this book? 1400 years ago, there was no science and scientific process established in the world and there was no scientists or anything. So how could this knowledge be in the book? So now Quran gives you evidence uh, objectively about uh, science and about these questions that is not a circular argument anymore. If you say that, okay, I just believe in Quran because Quran is the book of God and that's why, because I believe in God, yes, now we are going through circles. But if you bring the evidences of Quran that established by science today, and you bring all the scientific knowledge of Quran, you bring all the other explanations of Quran, uh, and then you say, how could it be possible that this kind of book was, uh, you know, uh, uh, existed 1400 years ago? Wouldn't that book be book of God? And so you see you're coming from outside and you're proving the existence of the book of God, that this book must have come from God. So now we are, uh, it's, it's a different way. Uh, also, Quran uses very logical approach to convince people about the existence of God. You know, Quran uses, uh, Quran uh, dialogues with people who do not believe in God in a very logical way. Uh, you know, Quran asks, for example, many, many uh, solid questions from people to believe in God. For example, Quran says, Amman khalaqa samawati wal ard. Who is the, uh, the one who created the heavens and the earth? You know, or am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun. You know, uh, do people who do not believe in God, are they created from nothing or uh, they themselves are the creators? You know, such questions are very dynamic and very logical questions that Quran poses for people to reflect, to use their minds, to use their rational power. So uh, we're not going to Quran just to say that Quran is book of God and we should believe it, but Quran gives you logical approaches uh, that will help you to reflect on the existence of God. Zakhla Khair, thank you, very good uh, answer. Uh, Sheikh, one of the things that um, we find when we're giving dawah is that when the people start uh, you know, the atheists and the agnostics, they come and they present their argument to us or to the, you know, to, all, to the Muslims. It, it somehow makes them feel empowered that they have control over the conversation. But, you know, the people that believe in God, I think they have more evidence of the existence of God than the people who don't believe in God. So how do how do we sort of change that paradigm and we switch the sort of like the switch the um, the mode that you know like when they come and they say we have to the Muslims have to prove God we ha why don't we switch that question and say wait a minute there's abundance of evidence of, of, of the existence of God you have to prove to me why you don't believe in God and, I mean is there a way to to, to do that Yes, or, I mean, exactly. you know I mean? uh, so you can take control of the uh, conversation. 
exactly. Uh, no, mashallah, you had it uh, uh, properly. Uh, see, uh, and I alluded to in my presentation that when they say that you prove to me, uh, you give all kinds of proofs, just like example of that building, right? Example of the building, now someone comes to you and say, prove to me that there's a builder behind this building, you know, or there is a construction company behind this building. You know, you say, well, you prove to me, I have millions of reasons here that this building is built by a builder. Every aspect of this building is a, is a, is a, a sign of a builder. You now tell me that you prove to me that this building was built by itself. You come and, and uh, you know, explain to me, as you are the one who don't have proof. You are the one who don't have any kind of evidence. But my evidence is all my my life is an, a, a sign of God and existence, a reason for existence of God. Your life is a sign of God that you don't admit. You uh, this world is a sign of God. Everything that exists here is a sign of God. For example, you know when you see a car, when you see a very uh, you know a nice car, advanced car, everything. Uh, there's no doubt that this car was made by a company. The people who say, no, this car was made by itself. These are the people who should prove that this car was made by itself and this car does not have a maker. You know, the common sense, uh, when there's a piece of art, we say it, there is an artist behind it. If someone says, no, this art was made by itself, then they are the ones who need to prove uh, that they say that uh, there is uh, uh, no artist behind this art. So you prove. And so Muslims, believers in God, they have millions of reasons and evidences, but they don't have physical evidences in terms of bringing God in front of them physically. That's the only thing that if they are waiting for that, you know, they will see the angels when they die. They will see the existence of God in the uh, next life, but that's too late uh, to believe. So uh, uh, if they are asking for physical evidence of God himself, uh, that will happen, but uh, after the test of this life is over. Uh, but the signs of God and the reasons, logical reasons for existence of God are millions all around us, inside us, around us, is full of this, uh, reasons. But they are the ones who have no reason but assumptions, no reason but speculation, no reason but, uh, you know, uh, gases. Uh, so uh, they are the ones who don't have any reason I have had many, many opportunities and many dialogues, and you know, uh, a lot of them, have, uh, you know, have, have given up. A lot of them have changed their beliefs. They have, they have changed their thoughts after, uh, you know, uh, talking to them. Alhamdulillah. Uh, even if we have very little knowledge, as long as a person is convinced deeply, you know, they can just put some simple thoughts and questions and put the ball on their court. That you come and prove to me. If you are telling me that this laptop was made by itself, you prove to me. If I see this laptop, there are millions of reasons for me to believe that this a computer company made this laptop for uh, me. So now you bring the evidence that this laptop was made by itself. Zakhlaq, thank you. Um, so inshallah, we have uh, time is up, and I just wanted to see if you can um, recommend any any uh, video that we can. Um, for the audience so they can watch or continue because uh your presentation is probably two semesters worth of uh work and uh and discussion and um, researches so you know unfortunately with the limited time that we have here we won't be able to address all the issues or um go over all the points but if, if you to follow up or continue this this type of because this is the hardest thing amongst muslims and non-muslims all alike even in the Christian world, they're having the same uh, dilemma where many of the Christians are leaving Christianity and, and things of that nature just because, um, you know, they don't have the evidence to, to back it up. So is there anything that we can, on YouTube or something, we can go and uh, continue this kind of uh, education or anything you would recommend? Uh, yes, Alhamdulillah, there's uh, a lot of materials uh in the uh, media and in the internet and some good books uh, have come out uh, recently this one book the divine reality by hamza andreas uh, zortas you know in england uh, he, he wrote a book called the divine reality um, god and islam god islam and the mirage of atheism uh, there's uh, there are a couple other books that have actually quite a few books uh, that have been written about this topic and also some websites uh, 
there are a lot of uh, websites about uh, Quran and science, Islam and science. Uh, um, uh, I have to collect all those uh, specific website addresses. Um, but there are so many, uh, you know, uh, different resources that are available, uh, and also uh, uh, some YouTube lectures. Uh, some uh, famous speakers such as Noman Ali Khan, Yasser Qadi, uh, many others, they have given uh, uh, talks on uh, YouTube about the existence of God and uh, proofs for existence of God. Uh, a great scholar in Canada, Ayub Hamid, has written many books uh, and uh, as, uh, as website, a lot of materials. Uh, there are some other uh, scholars here in America and other places and other languages that they have written. So uh, this book, yeah, this topic is important and we have to have the resources and I'll make my PowerPoint also available inshallah for the audience that you can share with them uh, the, uh, the full PowerPoint presentation and they can also uh, ask questions later on inshallah through email or through uh, the internet. Okay, okay, just so last question, uh, someone had a pressing question. And uh, they're having some non-Muslims come over for Juma Khutbah. However, the situation is there is a, a lady who uh, changed her uh, identity, and now she's a male. So they want to know. The, uh, they want to know which side of the um, they, the, the, the brother or the sister should this person go and sit down while they listen to the Juma Khutbah. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's it's sort of like it's more of a fiqh question, but I don't uh, want it to be so, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, this is a different topic, but uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, the person himself uh, or, or that person uh, should be asked, "What do you consider yourself, a male or a female?" If you consider yourself a male, then go and sit among the males. If you are considering yourself a female, then you know, be honest and what what are you? Uh, what is your reality? Whatever you are, the, then go and be with them. Inshallah khair. Zakallah khair. Thank you very much. Um, and, and last thing is, uh, so this is the last question. I'm so sorry. It's okay. uh, what is your advice for women in Dawah? Uh, women, alhamdulillah, Allah has given them a much uh, tender heart, uh, a, a much uh, merciful heart. Um, and the heart is the center of guidance and uh, women and sisters can receive the guidance much faster inshallah and they can uh, with their uh, good hearts they can uh, accept the message of the truth and that's why we see especially in the western world these days the sisters are much more dedicated much more active much more uh, and they uh, much easily receive the message of the truth uh, so they and also they can be the best uh, teachers, the best uh, speakers, and they can uh, really uh, you know uh, raise great children and help others in the society. So my suggestion is that sisters should be active, inshallah, uh, in seeking knowledge and active in sharing the knowledge, and they should be also uh, helping others understand that Islam is not against women. Islam is not against uh, uh, females, but in Islam, uh, the concept of justice and fairness is all over. And uh, so uh, women can be the best representatives of Islam these days in the Western world and everywhere. Uh, and inshallah, our sisters can do wonders more than even the man, because a lot of times sisters are able to multitask, like you see in the house that they can do so many things at the same time, the housework, the outside work, the, the services for the family. So inshallah, Allah has given them much uh, more resources and abilities that they can help share the message uh, as long as they are active in seeking the knowledge themselves and uh, uh, they are willing to do that. Allah will bless them and give them much more power and abilities to establish Islam in their own lives and in the lives of the rest of the people around them. Jazakallah khair, inshallah, if you can just close out with the dua and we will end right there. Thank you very much. Subhanak, alhamdulillah, my pleasure. Subhanak Allahu wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukru kullu. Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukru li jamiyya ni'amika an'amta alayna wa ja'alna min ibadika shakirin. 
يا الله جعلنا من عبادك الذاكرين يا الله thank you for this opportunity and thank you for all the resources and blessings that you have offered to us يا الله help us to become grateful help us to remember you in the best way help us to thank you in the best way and help us to worship you in the best ways help us to share your message with others in the best ways يا الله help uh, us to help other people to come out of ignorance come out of darkness come out of disbelief and nifaq and hypocrisy يا الله help us to live as active muslims as ambassadors of islam and help us to be the best uh, examples for other people in terms of our manners and in terms of our conduct يا الله reward all the brothers and sisters uh, for organizing this program and reward all of us for our time and efforts that uh, everybody has made and participated in this program. May Allah accept our dua for all of us and for all Muslims all over the world. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.